Hello and welcome to the webinar. Today our webinar is Enhance Your Business with Desktop Video Conferencing provided by Ease Tech. I'm going to uh, begin our webinar with actually turning some video on of uh, some of our, one of our participants, Dan Miller and myself. Uh, you should all be able to see the video of me right now and we'll get started. Uh, my name is Dave Kyle. I'm a Senior Vice President and Co-Founder at Ease Tech. Uh, with me uh, remotely is Dan Miller, our Senior Engineer, who is actually one of the persons that inspired me for doing this video conference. He was talking about some customers that were doing this. Dan, I'm not sure your video is on right now. It is not. Uh, I can't. Uh, yeah. While Dan's getting that going, I'll continue on. And um, just mention who we are at Ease Technologies. We were founded in 1993. I know many of you are familiar with us, but if you haven't heard about us, we're located in Columbia, Maryland. We provide managed IT services and a fantastic cloud workspace for those of you interested in expanding your capabilities and services within cloud, com cloud computing. Uh, we can be found at easetech.com and um, you will find us, if you wanna call us at 301-854-0010. So let's get started and talk about our agenda. So currently we want to talk about the technology people have today and just share some of that information. And then also talk about how to evaluate some of your needs, uh, look at some current desktop video solutions that are available, and uh, then talk about some video and audio tips for everyone. I, I guess to sort of preface this for everyone, this is not intended to be you know kind of a high-end uh, solution for anyone. What we wanted to do was provide uh, everyone the ability to kind of just get started with their, in some cases, their current technology and how they can just start off with, you know, some minimal investments or even what they have today. So we'll have an opportunity for any of your questions and, and help you out with some of that. I have a few that were presented to me earlier and we'll add to that uh, along with your questions you may have towards the end. Dan, how you doing there? I uh, just need you to grant me access. <laughs> okay, I'll make you host. There we go. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Dan. Sorry about that. We'll explain a bit of how this works. You can see that we have our own challenges in making it successful. You should see video from both Dan and myself at this point in time. Uh, I'm going to continue on with just some ideas about how we're using desktop video conference. Because I said Dan has actually kind of helped me think about this as something we want to do. And just a few areas that I want to help cover for us is uh, kind of how we use it today. And currently I've been using it for employee interviews. Uh, we've done some team meetings. I participated in a client meeting just recently as a matter of fact. Uh, educational programs and in the case that we're doing right here, um, we use it for uh, marketing events. Whoop, let's go back one second here. So, um, Dan, how do you have you seen this being used with some of your clients and people you work with? Uh, well, we have uh, several clients that have multiple offices, and trying to get everybody in one office in one conference room can be complicated. So, um, a lot of our clients will that are in that scenario will use this as a virtual meeting space, as like a virtual conference room, so everyone can get into the same conference room and at least see each other face to face. Uh, sometimes conference calls um, aren't enough, and uh, seeing that visual uh, aid helps immensely. Yeah, I, I've seen a lot of people working with this, and I think we've had a lot of customers ask us about it recently, too. Um, I think one of the advantages of this kind of thing for us is we've been using webinars as something we've been doing for quite a while. and. Um, in marketing events, essentially. But one of the limitations we had with the previous product was it, it didn't do a great job at um, uh, really providing good video. So we're, we'll talk about the product we're using today. It's called Zoom, but we'll also talk about some other ones as well. So let's talk about some of the barriers to video conferencing that were kind of things in the past that were difficulties for us to, to work with this technology. We had hardware issues, software issues. Um, a lot of people found it difficult to use and inversion to technology. Um, I think the, the biggest thing that's really changed for everyone recently is, is like a lot of this hardware and software is kind of there all today. I mean, it really took specialized technology and equipment to make it all work. Um, do you still see there's an aversion to uh, technology, Dan? 
Uh, no, I mean, the threshold has been lowered immensely with uh, different technologies that have come out that have become kind of ubiquitous. So a lot of people are asking more and more about how to do it in a more seamless way and uh, allow you know, multiple people to join over one technology. All right. Um, let's talk about some of the current hardware technology that's out there. And Dan, you want to explain some of the new or current technologies that we have available for us? Yeah, so um, most of your mobile devices come with a, um, a front-facing camera that can be used for uh, video conferencing. Um, most laptops now actually come with a uh, webcam built into the screen. Uh, that's what I'm talking to you guys on now. Um, and then, uh, you know, there's other devices that you can make everything be a little bit more clear and a little bit more robust by investing into a dedicated webcam or as like Dave has pictured here, um, a, a dedicated microphone. Because uh, sometimes it's kind of hard to get everybody crammed around one laptop and be able to see everybody and be able to hear everybody. So if you're you know, in a conference room scenario, you may want to uh, invest in getting dedicated hardware for that. Yeah, it's kind of a graduated thing. At one point in time, we were just using existing technology to do our webinars. And um, what I've learned um, now is that one of the most important things is audio. And for example, that one microphone you see there, I actually have here with me. And it's, uh, I'll explain it again and even talk about it again, but it was one of the first investments we made into improving our webinars was having a better microphone. As Dan described, we made investments in the microphone for two areas. One, to improve just the quality, because it's really important. But secondly, we had a, a group of people talking together, it made it easier. Kind of like if you're using one of those Polycom speakerphones for teleconferencing and things like tell, tell um, I'm sorry, <laughs> as a speakerphone for a large amount of people in a room. So um, we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the cameras and things like that. So for example, um, I'm not gonna get details for you, but I even have one right here. Uh, my MacBook has a built-in video camera, but this one right here was something that I used on a couple of occasions it was about $50 and uh, very inexpensive that I could attach onto a desktop computer and make work. And along with my microphone, which was about um, I think $150 at the time, uh, I could turn any desktop computer I had into a, a, a very good video conferencing system with just those two th systems. But like Dan said, a lot of the laptops today, and even you think about your iPhone and uh, desktop tablets already have that technology built in there. I do want to talk about the, probably the three different types of video conferencing. And uh, this is important to consider because it, it makes a big difference in evaluating the software you want to use. So the one type that I would talk about is a one-on-one. -on -one. So if you were doing interviews, that's a one-on-one -on -one scenario. A group meeting would be a scenario if you were involved in speaking with clients, you had multiple locations, you had people spread out across the country and wanted to have conversations on a regular basis. Uh, and then finally, one to many, which is something that we're doing here right now, more of a webinar scenario. Um, so you have different types of meetings and the, the, you need to think about that, especially then the numbers of users and if you have group meetings or one to many. Those considerations are really important uh, when you're evaluating software and hardware uh, and what you want to do. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons of desktop video conferencing. Um, and Dan and I were chatting about this in a practice that we did yesterday. So Dan, what were some of the things you thought were important here? Well, when you do video conferencing and you know, um, and you have a like versus a regular audio conference call, uh, you get people's attention. Um, you can see uh, visual cues when people are talking. So um, I, we've seen it even at the ease office when we're on a conference call, uh, audio conference call and multiple people start talking over top of each other because you can't see when the other person is going to start uh, or stop talking or finish their thought. Um, and then the other thing too is, uh, you know, everybody's guilty of it at some point, uh, being on an audio conference call, uh, putting that on in the background while you're trying to do two or three other things. Uh, with video conferencing, you can tell the person's attention and that they are paying attention in the meeting um, to be able to, you know, make sure uh, everything is being as efficient and as optimized as possible in the meeting. Yes, I was talking to a couple of people that I know that are that use video conferencing as a regular means of communicating with other team members, kind of a pros and cons kind of thing. Uh, and, and these were some of the feed, some of the feedback they provided to me was that I have to go on a Zoom call, as they called it, which is using that Zoom software, which we'll explain about shortly. But also they called it a Zoom call. 
and he said, uh, you know, kind of a bummer. I couldn't, I couldn't go do things that I wanted to normally do in a conference call. I couldn't walk out of the room or I couldn't do other things. So yeah, pros, it, it does keep everybody's attention. The con is you got to keep everybody's attention. Um, another uh, issue that I was brought up in some of the conversation was that I need to think about what I'm wearing or, or how I'm dressing in that morning if I'm working from home. And, um, you know, doing my hair or putting on a proper shirt is an appropriate thing that I need to think about as opposed to uh, just casually coming down um, and just sort of sitting there with my coffee with a uh, messed up hair and, a, and, a, and an old T-shirt. So it does change the, the approach of someone maybe working from home. Um, I think one of the things that I did hear from a lot of people, though, that generally the, there was a favorable response about everyone having a better uh, connection with people. As we said, better attention, but also better connection. And people have the ability to see people they might not otherwise see and sometimes that voice call doesn't make that final connection for everyone. So, you know, a lot of the inversion that we talked about or thought about originally, it, it, that, that's coming down. I mean, I think a lot of people are using FaceTime more regularly for their personal uh, use. So a lot more people are, are more familiar with using video in general and know how it functions and, and it's not as adverse from maybe several years ago. Um, one of the things too that cons to be worried about and, and something to be very careful, and we'll talk about again, is just, environmental issues. Um, a lot of times people overlook that. Even in the background of our screens right here, Dan and I were talking about that. I had a, a video call with someone and you know, behind me here, it's just an office. And Dan's actually at one of our customers today, uh, kind of remotely doing this, which again, facilitates. He was busy, he had to go down there. We could still do this webinar just because of the video conferencing aspect. But the background aspect is really important and sometimes it's overlooked. You may have a nice room for it, but you want to be careful what posters you have, things like that as, as part of what's going on. You know, if you live across from a fire department, interestingly enough, we were, we were doing webinars with an association and they gave us a caveat that we were going to record the webinar, but we had to be careful and we may have to stop the webinar because they were across from a fire department and it made a lot of noise. So things like that are important. Um, in consideration when you're kind of doing the webinar or even any kind of desktop video conferencing. So let's talk about some more of these. I'm going to bring all the, the bullet points out and Dan and I can share some, some thoughts on all this. So there's actually lots of considerations uh, when evaluating software and hardware and, and way you should be using desktop video conferencing. And again, we've kind of spelled it all out already that there's different types. So I'd say there's three different types in my opinion. There's one-on-one, -on -one, there's group meetings, and then there's one-to-many as in like a webinar, what we're doing here. Um, so when you're evaluating hardware, software, and what you need to do, you need to think about it in those terms. And maybe you need to look at it as like, I need to do all those things. And that's fine too. I think it's just an important, you know, to take a note when you're you know, figuring out. I know we've had some customers talk to us about wanting to do more interviews. So, you know, really, Investing in a high-end system may not be necessary, especially if you're doing simple one-on-one -on -one interviews, kind of things like that. Frequency is a big one, because um, that's gonna help you decide you know, how far you wanna go with either hardware, software, or other aspects of that. Um, Dan, what do you, talk a little bit about what you think on ease of use and, and registration, things like that. Yeah, I mean, the big thing for ease of use is if it's not easy to use, people aren't going to use it. And uh, based on, again, the frequency from the, above, um, the bullet point above, that you know, if you're using it a lot, then you want to make it as easy as possible for people to be able to get in, log in, um, be able to start a uh, pro. I mean, a, a video call on demand without having to schedule it. Um, how heavy is the installer to install for somebody that may be using the technology for the first time, like uh, like a Zoom or a Skype or something like that? Um, so making sure that the users get buy-in um, from the top down. And um, you know, getting it going uh, there as easy as possible is how you get the adoption rate to go up. Yeah, for me, the there's other aspects too. So uh, some of the programs now have enhanced a lot of the features as of, with video, but also things like event registration. Can you easily send a meeting invite from Outlook, for example, which a lot of these tools are starting to do as well? Do you need to do document sharing? Um, oftentimes, when we've done webinars, we want to share documents with people participating in the webinar so we can you know get some information out to them um, some newer features that I've found that I'm, I'm, I'm interested in using because of the aspect of what I do from education and webinar is doing social media and live streaming again not all systems can do that I would say that if you're 
kind of a nonprofit and want to start off by uh, educating members and things like that, live streaming, social media, other things might be an important consideration for what you want to do. Uh, you know, there's also the other side of that social media live streaming, which is, you know, do you need to make sure your system in communication is very private too? So it's the opposite is, you know, is it a secure system? Is that important to you? But it's our consideration, of course. Um, again, we're trying to emphasize here not having to go do a full conference room. If you are in a situation where you are doing this on a frequent basis, education uh, programs for membership-based uh, uh, nonprofits, things like that, you know, you may have more budget money you want to spend. But I'd also suggest to get started, you can start off pretty, uh, pretty low budgets. You know, for example, um, you know, we'll, we'll explain some of them to you, but you know, Skype, for example, is one we'll talk about. That's kind of built into some of the licensing you may already have. Um, FaceTime is free. Uh, this particular program we're using here, the way I'm using it, is about $55 a month. And uh, go to webinar, go to uh, meeting is about $90 a month. So yeah, um, Zoom actually has a free tier as well. Um, most okay. of these technologies have a free tier to get you started and get your foot in the door. And they all actually have limitations on them. Um, but you can at least test it before you go and invest any money into it. Yeah, we talked about calendar integration, but uh, another important one for, for me was event recording. So I often take all these recordings and this one too, it's I'll, I'll record it and then um, edit it back out and put it up on YouTube so we can be rebroadcast that way so people can see it again. It's, it's just something we want to hold. Um, that's not the, something everybody needs, but sometimes there are meetings people will record what's going on. There are polls and surveys, again, you know, see if people are, are engaged with you. Um, you can set up, I know this program has the ability to set some polls up. And the question then becomes in hardware, as I've said, you don't want to have to invest too much, but it can accommodate hardware. And more importantly, can your system uh, upgrade for you as well. I mean, you might start off at a very modest level, but you start realizing, hey, I want to get special equipment. Can this system I want to work with handle the more sophisticated or higher end cameras or audio equipment that I want to deal with? So let's talk about some of the current solutions. And Dan, I'll let this give you some a chance to talk about some of this because I know that you uh, have have a lot more familiar than I even do on some of these things. So do you want to share some thoughts on some of these? Sure. So um, FaceTime and Google Hangouts are uh, pretty ubiquitous. Everybody has it built into either their Android or their iPhone. Um, Hangouts has the uh, ability to actually go between multiple platforms where FaceTime uh, is actually um, just on iOS only. Um, we've got Skype, Skype for Business, which have different use cases um, for them. And I think we're going to get into them some more in the next couple of slides. Uh, Uber Conference is um, one that I use personally. Uh, Jason uh, Sheardon actually introduced me to it. It allows us to do uh, on-demand conference calls and um, screen sharing and stuff like that. Uh, and then, you know, Dave's been using GoToWebinar and GoToMeeting for a very, very long time. Right. Um, and now we're exploring with Zoom as well. Yeah, I think the GoToMeeting and GoToWebinar, um, so there we go. We're pretty close to each other, and I found out that Zoom has better video functionality for me, so I, switched, I decided to switch over to that uh, as, as a way to try some out more enhanced video and video um, um, recording, as a matter of fact. So you want to talk about FaceTime for us? Sure. So uh, FaceTime is built into any iOS device or Mac OS device. It's free. Uh, currently, it's only one-to-one, -one, um, but I'm actually beta testing uh, the new iOS that's coming out in the fall, and you can do group FaceTime calls at that point. It's very easy. Um, I've tested it with several friends that are also developers as well. Uh, unfortunately, it's Apple only, but the fidelity is very, very good. It's HD, um, you know, and uh, you can, I use it every day pretty much for my kids to be able to talk to my grandparents or you know I'll use it yesterday I used it with Pat um, one of the other technicians at the office he was on site at a client uh, needed to help with something that was visually it would have been easier to see it visually he flipped on FaceTime we were able to troubleshoot it and save another trip going down there because FaceTime was able to do it for us yeah I'd say it's a good uh, use case for someone personally that you know I don't necessarily think it's a great um, business one 
Um, but if you do need to use it for business, we have some tips here about general desktop video conferencing. I would suggest that you follow. Um, I have them bottom, for example, use a stand and not your hand. If you, if you can, you know, set something up I, and I've done this before, if I'm using, um, you know, my iPhone to do video conferencing with FaceTime is, you know, put it on a stand so it's not just bouncing around. It looks, it's a little hard for people to follow something like that. Then I'm gonna let you help me out a little bit with talking about Skype and Skype for Business because they're two different products and, and where they fit in. So Skype was actually the original um, video conferencing that, I, that introduced me to everything. Uh, Microsoft purchased them uh, several years ago um, and then they integrated into the Office 365 suite and added more business tools to it um, to entice uh, businesses to start using um, video conferencing and voice over IP solutions through Office 365. So not all Office 365 licensing comes with it, but if you are an Office 365 customer, reach out to your account manager and we can let you know if it's included. Um, it is cross-platform, uh, which is nice because you can use it on Android, iOS, Windows, Mac. Um, it does have a integration into Outlook, so you can have your Skype business uh, contacts be able to um, you know, click on something in Outlook and launch a Skype call. Uh, and it's, it's pretty well suited for larger organizations. I mean, because Skype's been doing this, uh, you know, I would believe one of the longer term companies that have been doing it since the inception of video conferencing. On a desktop. You know, again, a lot of, since it's a Microsoft, Microsoft platform, it's been integrated a lot into Microsoft as well. I think they've integrated parts of it into other applications or using in Office 365, like Teams and things like that. So there's, there's a lot to it. Uh, in some ways, I, I kind of describe it as being almost too much in that, it, you know, like, like a lot of Microsoft products, it does well at some things, but it, but it extends out to other areas that are hard to follow and understand. So from an easy use standpoint, and generally from a one-to-one, -one, I think it does well. There's a lot of capabilities that it can be extended into a larger conference rooms or even enterprise environment communication. Um, I'm not sure it's a good webinar program or I, I haven't seen it used too often in, in group meetings very successfully, but it can be done. It's just not as easy maybe uh, as some other systems that are out there. I think they've also hurt themselves a little bit by having Skype and Skype for Business. I find that a little- yeah, It's a little confusing uh, with the between the two. Um, and most people, when they think of Skype, they think of the other desktop client, but it's right. not the same. Uh, right. It doesn't have the same feature sets. Right. So we'll talk a little bit about Zoom, the program we're using here today. Um, and I put it in the same category as GoToMeeting and GoToWebinar. Um, again, I've been using these kind of one-to-many programs for quite a while. The thing I wanted to deal with on Zoom is it's better video functionality easier to use and record video while an event was happening. Uh, I can have all kind of screen recordings. I can, I can do, I think I can even enlarge the screen a little bit there. I can enlarge Dan's screen right now if I wanted to. Uh, I can keep it just me. Uh, that's just Dan, I'm sorry, I make it small. There's a lot more controls of what it comes down to in working with this, and I really like that functionality. If we were to have multiple people in this, which you can do, they'd simply be lined up across the bottom. We'd have several people in the screen we could see and talk with. Uh, as I mentioned before, I think it has very affordable pricing with Zoom. I thought it was, you know, I'm, there's a $14 version, there's a free trial version. I'm using the $55 version to let me broadcast to up to 100 people. Uh, I found that registration was kind of easy. And then uh, event management is easy as well. And I'll show you how that works a little bit. Um, one of the things you can do, for example, I can actually control some of this. I'm not sure if you can see this part of it right now, but this is a control panel I'm gonna bring up. And if I wanted to, I think it can just, let me see video, for example. Um, and I'll, I'll probably jump out of here and have to do that. I think it's uh, not letting me do that right now. It's going against my, it should just be showing my screen. Nope, not doing that. I have my slideshow going. So it's proving me wrong. One of the things I, it does have and I like is it's, uh, you can annotate things in here. I can, so I can create a, a panel I can draw. Uh, I have the ability to, um, if I'm working in a slideshow, I can, I can draw not only on a whiteboard, but I can actually just annotate right over top of what's going on. So I, I can have a lot of different functions if I'm working with other people and, and things like that. So let's see if I can even just annotate this. Or, 
Yeah. So you, you have a lot of different controls on um, how I can work with different things. So I, I like the, the it was really feature rich and I have to apologize. I haven't used them all. I've probably done a five webinar so far. So I'm not as familiar with every little features. It just seemed like there was an extensive amount of features that gave me a lot of different options that I couldn't use before. So here's another screen, for example, that we did have with a, a client last week. And it's a, here's a screen with just having a few different people attending. So we had Katie and, and myself and Chris and our customer. And then below here across the bottom is this uh, control panel that it happens. And you may have it on your system as well. From there, I can see the number of participants that I have. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I can create a poll here. I can control my share if I want to do just the video. I want to do the presentation or if I just want to even do my desktop, I can, I just can set that all up. And I also get these messages up here as well. And some of you may have seen that message pop up when I sent the chat message out to everybody earlier. So I think that's, um, let's just stop this for a second. I'm going to see if I can get this to go. I'm going to try some, something out. So I'm going to go to uh, share and I'm going to share just my video. Yeah, there you go. So at this point, you're, you should be seeing just my screen and me in it. So if you wanted to jump out and just have a video set up and control, it makes it a lot easier to work with as opposed to um, you know, having the screen itself and control of, of just different aspects. So I can even you know, get into the desktop and go back to this. Um, so you can jump back and forth, which is kind of nice. So I'm gonna jump back to my slideshow. And we'll advance the next one. So let's get into a few tips, make sure we're, we're covering everything for everybody. And if anybody has any questions, that'd be good too. So one of my first tips um, is upgrading your microphone. Um, and uh, into your lighting. And I'll talk about lighting in a second. I think I mentioned to you already. So here's this microphone here. This is called the Blue Yeti. It's about $150. You can probably get it for about $139. Uh, but there are many ones that are out there. Even a $60 microphone might serve you well. It's simply a USB microphone. I don't have any mixers, any special equipment. This attaches right into my, my laptop computer right here. It's pretty easy to work with. I'll talk about lighting in a second. Um, you know, obviously this is video, so I would suggest my, the sound quality is more important than the, the video, but if you are running video and you're in a dark office somewhere, maybe you know, an investment in that may help out as well. I have to really emphasize practicing and, and testing. Um, before I did this webinar, I tried this all out probably three or four times in a couple different ways. I mean, I was familiar with go to webinar, like I said, and before I did this, I wanted to make sure at least I had some familiarity with how it all operated and what I could and couldn't do. Still some things I'm learning, but uh, there's a certain amount of comfort level. I want to be able to focus on the presentation and not get uh, encumbered with the technology. So practicing and testing are really important with that. Um, I mentioned before, back, background views and noises are really critical. You know, know your environment that you'll be presenting in. And if you're just that person who's even in your own office, do you have a good office you can go to that's, you know, a little quieter or another part of the, the uh, the building itself. You know, in our office building right now, we've been having a lot of uh, construction out on the, the parking garage. So in the back of my head, I was sort of preparing for this. I had to go somewhere else I could because the jackhammers been out there earlier uh, in Monday. So now that it's a little quieter out there, I can make this presentation from this particular office. Um, also make sure that, you know, sometimes you may have to deliver it yourself if you're doing a FaceTime or, or, or Skype um, conversation with someone. What's your directions, timing, how to operate this? Is it something that they need special instructions that you can copy and paste out of? You know, we have a pretty good attendance in this one. Um, and it seems, so it seems like to me that everyone can figure this out relatively easy and the, and the directions were pretty uh, easy to work with. Um, and always suggest everyone plans for the worst. Um, you know, one of the things about this is it can go wrong. So in all my webinars, I always try to provide a phone number and a call in information if for some reason the uh, audio isn't working properly. And so backup plans are really important. Uh, and then if you have the luxury, have a production assistant. Um, assistant. We, we don't have one here, I've never used one, but I know in a lot of organizations that's something they can do. Or you may be watching this uh, program we're doing right now and be responsible for that. Uh, so I think it's important because it is hard to run 
the board, you might say, here and the, the computer and the, the presentation. And I'm bringing Dan in and out. Uh, it'd be much nicer to have somebody else with me to, you know, manage all that while it's going on, so the presenter can just focus on um, the presentation. So that's an important one to consider in some cases too. Dan, any we thoughts? Have, or, any yeah, thoughts? Say we actually have clients that actually may have um, dedicated, uh, like you know, not a full conference room, but a small room. Uh, where the background of like there's a dedicated computer there that that way if you need to have another computer so you're referencing something while you're presenting something um, you can do that uh, the other thing too is um, like David said upgrade your microphone or your headset I mean I'm using my uh, ear pods or my airpods through Apple uh, because my microphone on my Mac makes me sound like I'm talking through a can um, so there are a lot of things out there that you can do that are just small tweaks um, like Dave suggested, that make the experience much better. I think you mentioned one yesterday was a good one that I didn't think about, Dan. Well, that was the the headset. You know, you said Apple. You can buy, um, you know, a, head, a head microphone headset as well as you know, whole setup that some people use if they're doing it on a regular basis. You might see salespeople or, com or people who are making cold calls all the time, or uh, support people use those kind of things. If you're doing regular video conferencing, um, those headsets work very well. They might seem a little awkward. But I, I even have a set of, um, when I test this all out, I use a little small set of earbuds that I attach to a second computer just to try it out when I log in. So this morning before I did this, I had a second laptop computer that I set up another webinar and I, I logged into that both at the same time just to make sure the audio would all work and I could test it all out, test my microphone, see the video. So a, a little redundant, but it's important for me that they get the details right and I wanted to make sure I had, it. and all this stuff too, it's very inexpensive. I keep getting back to that. You can really graduate and spend thousands and thousands of dollars, but I think for just a couple hundred dollars, and even in some cases, what you have built in, you can go pretty far pretty quickly. Exactly. Um, one other final tip on this area, I'm going to suggest you create a script or an agenda to follow. I remember when I first started out doing webinars, I made a checklist for myself. I mean, I would go through everything from, you know, when to start up. Uh, you may have heard me announce that that. that you know, 11.59 that we were going to be starting at 12.02, just kind of things like that to keep everybody in communication. Um, a meeting's different or a one-on-one's different, but as a webinar or a, a larger meeting, there are things you want to be able to be sensitive to people's time. So you want to file that out. You want to even have a checklist of what you do to start, what you want to do to close, and give yourself some instructions on that, especially from a production standpoint. I basically use my slide deck here as my... Um, agenda. So I keep myself in tune and time on that. I have a little clock on the side that I'm watching my time. So, you know, we're not going to go past the 45 minute scenario of the program. So little things like that are probably critical and helpful in making sure it's going to work successfully for you. Um, this is a desktop video conferencing. So I do want to talk about lighting. Um, this is a picture of me in this same room. Uh, this is last week. So this is from one side of the, the, the conference room, and the second picture on the right is from the side I'm on right now today. So if I were to just simply spin around, you would have a terrible image of me in there. Uh, not that it's a good image anyway, but um, the, the backlighting is really critical. So right now I'm sitting in a conference room, and I have forward light coming at me, as well as overhead light. So I didn't have to really invest in any kind of special um, lights um, but if I was stuck in a scenario where I had this backlighting that was so bright, I might need to have the lights um, available to me in a situation where the, you see my face is all darkened on the left-hand picture right there. So again, I think the lighting in this room is great. Uh, if I was in a closed room and had a lot of backlighting, I'd want to have some lighting uh, for myself. So just paying attention to that is really critical. So here's a few tips on um, some video lighting, for example. Um, I showed Dan this one yesterday. You can upgrade your lighting kit that I, sh I have on the screen here for literally is $120. So this LED setup here is two stands, two LED lights, uh, some uh, diffusers as well as electronics to control all this. This is on, on at Amazon right now for $120. So again, if you want to graduate, just pass the microphone, pass your video camera, and get some lighting on an ongoing basis. If you're going to have meetings in the same room, or if you're going to do uh, training programs, it's a great way to do it very inexpensively. Um, just a couple other tips. Uh, I, I actually have my laptop I'm using for this. 
sitting on a, on a little bit of a riser. So the camera is faced straight on in at me and uh, as, as reasonably close as I can, you can see my shoulders are in place here. We're not too, too far away that you can't see me, but not too, too close that yet. You, you get too close to just my face. So it's, the idea is, you know, taking some prime, prime and practice to get the straight on, keeping the camera at eye level if you can, and just doing a few things to kind of make it a better experience all in all for somebody who's participating with you, especially again, that frequency point. If you're doing this on a regular basis, you may make some investments of time and money to make sure it's successful and looks professional. Uh, here's a chance for anybody has any questions. I'm gonna let Dan, I'm gonna let you um, fill in anything else you may have for us in the way of any other thoughts or, or things you wanna sh share. Um, uh a lot of these solutions they do um you can start off for like they said very little cost um, and if you want to upgrade for example um like into a conference room setup uh, the costs have come way down in the past couple of years uh, for example zoom offers a zoom room uh, where you can actually turn a conference room into a zoom room so it's a, a little bit enhanced microphone and uh, video camera and uh, all that kind of stuff and it's all approved through zoom and that can be purchased through zoom um, and other uh, providers out there will do that as well uh, Skype has some stuff that you can actually that they recommend um, you know if you want to take it to the next level but just getting started most of this stuff is uh, free to try or free with limitations like uh, I have a zoom account that I use on a regular basis um, you know for a group meeting it's limited to like 40 minutes and for uh, a one-on-one -on -one, it's unlimited um, but a lot of the other features are turned off um, that I can't use but for what I need it normally works for um, let's see we have a question what package would you recommend to log on to clients PCs I guess that really just depends on the needs of the client to be honest um, you know we would need more information uh, than that. Um, we use multiple different ones depending on the client as well as our ease agent that's installed on everybody's machines to give them a hand. Yeah, I, I, I'll, what I'm going to do is um, I'll share some links back out um, with information to some of the products I was mentioning here. Um, so everyone, on a, also I'm probably going to send out a survey as well. So with that, I'll, I'll, I'll share some information on that. Um, I had a similar question that was emailed to me prior to this, which was the best service for video conferencing. And like Dan said, I think that's a tough one. It really needs to be know what your organization is doing with all the factors that are involved. I'd say the most versatile at the best price. We're seeing is Zoom. Doesn't mean there's other ones that are out there that are really good. Doesn't mean Skype's not the right answer or, or even Google Hangouts. Depends what you want to do. Uh, I know that we have an association we work with. They're using FaceTime as their means of communicating with their um, members. And they've had a lot of success with that. So that, that again, there's a wide range of them. It's hard to say which is best for everyone. Yeah, there's uh, big names out there, there's small names. I've used at least a dozen different ones in the past year uh, when dealing with support vendors for working on problems. So it's it's all over the place. Yeah, I had another question prior to the, the program starting which was you know do I need to can I do this by myself or, or can I do need do I need to have someone run it um, from a computer separately and to to answer that is I do all this all by myself I've taken time to practice it I just use it with one laptop I don't have a second computer or any other sets of equipment that's running it so I have the presentation the projection everything all running from one system and I think anyone could really kind of do this on their own as they took a little time to practice it. Also for our customers, I know Dan's been out helping a few people, um, you know, please contact our, your account uh, administrator, which would be you know, Chris Bubeck or myself or Dan, and we'd be happy to help uh, sit down with you and evaluate your needs and give you some choices or even, you know, try some more, some things with us one-on-one -on, -one on this particular pro these programs or other ones as well and, and help provide some guidance for you. That's one of our services that we do for you. So, Dan, any uh, final words or thoughts? Uh, no, like I said, the uh, the level, the threshold level has been lowered. Get out there, give it a shot, give us a call, and uh, we can help evaluate uh, which would best meet your needs. Uh, meet your needs. Great, thank you very much, Dan. So, before we part, I just want to share with you, for those of you who are familiar with, and those who are not, I just want to remind you that we provide uh, the EaseCloud workspace among our other IT services. 
and the EaseCloud workspace is a cloud solution that provides increased security, improve, improved disaster recovery, allows you to work from anywhere on any device, and provides awesome peace of mind for anybody who's really trying to remove themselves from having the burden of, of the technology that's in front of them sometimes. And uh, we have a solution in place that we'd be more than happy to talk with you about. Um, if you have any questions about this topic or others, please contact me at davideastech.com. Uh, love to hear from you. Stop at our website. I'll be sending out survey, a survey and feedback, and as well as the webinar, webinar recording information. So um, again, just want to thank you for your time and uh, look forward to catching up with you at our next webinar. Thanks a lot, Dan. I'll talk to you later on. Thanks. Have a good day, everyone.